This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Also brought to you by ExpressVPN, the best VPN there is. Take back your online privacy today. to go on vacation for a while. Yeah, I need a break from Critic doing all those crazy things to us in his sketches. Speaking of which, why has our travel agent been so quiet? Sorry. I love turning around for the dramatic reveal. Shit! We're in a sketch! I should have known that with it being in the Channel Awesome studio. Wait a minute, Tamara. Maybe the Critic is travel agent Zorg has some good vacations. How did you say that like it was a normal thing? You know, you really should listen to Mr... Right. You know who we are, Critic. For we specialize in nostalgic future vacation spots. Nostalgic futures? Don't ask him, it's gonna be a bit. We take customers to the futures past decades thought we'd get. For example, are you nostalgic for the 90s? Is he supposed to sound like Holly Hunter? Yes, we are. Well, we have several futures that the 90s predicted were gonna happen. Come on, Tamara, that sounds like fun. Well, I guess I do have fond memories of the 90s. No, of course you do. Here's a future from 12 Monkeys. This sucks! What you think? Cold and apocalyptic. All right, let's try the future from the postman. Jesus. Verdict? Warm and apocalyptic. Well, I got a lovely future here for Waterworld. <laughs> what were we even standing on? I got all sorts of 90s futures, like Terminator 2. <laughs> Judge Dredd. Hmm, <laughs> Matrix. Hmm. This one's not too bad. Yeah, everything's got a green tint, but I could make it- Oh, come on! Life comes from destruction, disorder, and chaos. Yeah, but why did the 90s predict that the future would be terrible? Well, I, don't, I do have one last future for you, the fifth element. Oh, wow, this one's pretty great. Yeah, it's imaginative and fun. It looks like a place you could actually live. Are there any downsides to this? Well, you would have to walk around wearing days. Well, we've worn Stranger on the show. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, and the occasional war zone. What was that? I know this music. Let's change the beat. Hey! You're a monster! I know. Yes, the 90s sure did love their anti-authority. Whether it be parents, teachers, or society as a whole, they love to encourage you to not conform! just like everyone else. Bubble tape is not part of a well-balanced diet. What a joy to have him in our family tree. <laughs> Sci-fi futures were the same. Most 90s movies set in the future had a dark, bleak, menacing world that had to be fought against. But one of the few futures that broke the mold was 1997's Fifth Element. Writer and director Luc Besson apparently wrote this in his teens. And boy, does it show. This is a goofy, action-packed, totally all-over-the-place flick that most people didn't know how to respond to when it first came out. Even today, it's a little hard to categorize it. It takes itself too seriously to be a comedy, yet too lightly to be a drama. It's too cliché to be artsy, yet too strange to be average. Doesn't have enough commentary to be deep, yet is too abstract to be mindless action. All of that in the long run weirdly worked in its favor, as years later, people like that it's hard to describe exactly what it is. What they remember the most about it, though, is the future. Mixing CG, puppets, models, and giving amazing detail to its designs, from the clothes to the pamphlets. They have the letters cross over like a graphic designer would. They didn't need to do that, but they did that. It's one of the most livable futures ever put on screen. We've only seen these kind of futures in animation, like the Jetsons or Futurama. So to see so much money put into it on such a grand scale truly was mind-blowing. Over 25 years later, we're gonna revisit this unique future and see why, on its own strange terms, it created something we've heard a million times, but have never quite seen in this way. So, ready your multi-pass. This is The Fifth Element. 
So it reinforces what I said earlier about being tonally all over the place right from the start. This is a movie with screaming DJs, singing Smurfs, and women wrapped in lasagna, yet it starts off like a Ridley Scott horror flick. A uh, good one. Huh, guess there is only one. We open in Egypt, because everything in the 90s opened in Egypt, where a professor is making a huge discovery. This meme. Aziz, light! I don't have time to list all the ways the internet used this, so here's my top five. A priest tries to stop their discovery, but it's too late, as teenage golden Pokemon turtles from another planet arrive. Uh, are you German? France, we are from France. They reveal a secret room where ancient stones and the fifth element are kept, and need to be moved. War is coming. Stones not safe on Earth anymore. Given its history, Earth was a weird place to keep it anyway. They kill the professor, but Luke Perry's three minutes on screen tries to fight him off. Put the gun down. No. Billy, no. So I guess I'm dead? I don't know. I'm not in the rest of the movie, but God help you if I'm not before the title! Pass your knowledge to the next priest. The Cadbury tortoise tells him to pass on his knowledge as we cut to 300 years later where an unknown entity is discovered. Hey, who bit off the end of the Star Destroyer? That's the best part. We're in position, Mr. President. Initiating a thermonucleotic imaging. So, what you're saying is you don't know what this is. So while I guess I can't say anymore this is the dumbest president I've seen, he's still impressively stupid. He's played by a fun actor, too, the late Tom Lister Jr. I actually really like when he pops up in something. But the way he's written is like a complete dumbass. He never seems to know what's going on. What you're saying is you don't know what this is. So what you're telling me, Father, there's nothing that can stop Why in the hell is it eating up all the cell Do you have any idea where it's headed? But there's the one with radio waves. What do you mean it's advanced? What do you mean? Hello. And then? Hello. Then what? Hello? Who's that guy? What did that guy say when I said, who's that guy? Nobody seems to know what this ball of evil is, except for Father Cornelius, played by Ian Holm. He says the ball of evil is, get this, a ball of evil. It is evil. Absolute evil. Written by a teenager, you say? The president tells the army not to shoot, but this is another movie military that goes bah to orders. I have a doubt. I don't, Mr. President. They're consumed by the pack pellet as we cut to Corbin Dallas, played by Bruce Willis, waking up from the intro and getting to his job as a taxi driver. Ha, huh, error number one, like there'll still be taxis in the future. Ha! Huh? You're long enough, come on, give me the cash! Ladies and gentlemen, maybe my favorite character in the movie. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of weirdos in this, but this dude takes the cake. You have to push that little yellow button to load it. <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> oh, God. He's like Cheech Bobcat Goldthwait Marin. I have no idea what his deal is. You don't mind, do you? Take it. I don't need it! You could cut him out and miss nothing, but I just love him. What's even this dance he's doing? This guy's amazing. Very nice, Ed. You like it? How did they not replace the dancing baby in the 90s? Humanity is blind! Yertle the chicken nugget flies in to save the day, but he's taken out by creatures called Mangalores. You know, for protectors of the ultimate weapon, they sure do go out like unprepared bitches a lot, don't they? Any survivors? Only one. But Thanos' hand survives, and they say there's enough cells in it to bring someone back to life. Kind of like 3D printing a human. Hey look, things are weird under a black light. Written by a teenager, you say? <laughs> Written by a teenager, you say? Apparently, this is the fifth element, played by Mila Jovovich. The supreme being with perfect cells. I won't fight you on that. But I never follow if she was a turtle before, or a statue before, or how this worked. Compositional elements of his DNA chain are the same as ours. There's simply more of them, tightly packed with infinite genetic knowledge. If she was a turtle, was she like, the perfect turtle? If she was a statue, was she like, the perfect statue? I don't know, the scream on the floating thing from Star Trek IV doesn't look perfect to me. I'd like to take a few pictures. Boing, 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 boing. <laughs> the archives. It should be pointed out that the language is in gibberish. Well, okay, it is, but it's very well planned out gibberish. Jovovich and Passant worked it out and even made a small dictionary for it. 
I like too that they didn't give her subtitles and let her other forms of communication come through with the character, allowing us to also admire this language that sounds like backwards meepos. Her perfect cells make her super strong and she breaks out with the police chasing her. Shot and her cologne ad ready to go. She crashes into Corbin's car, who is immediately drawn to her, and yeah, honestly, who couldn't be? Boom, <laughs> boom, yeah, I understand boom. I know this is an age old trope, the fish out of water adorably not fitting in, but when it's done well, it's done well, and Jovovich does it really well. Bada boom. <laughs> big ba boom, big bada boom. It's funny, for all her badass roles where she acts like she's too cool to care, her strongest role is this goofy character because she's so passionate and does act like she cares. You have an unauthorized passenger in your vehicle. Corbin takes pity on her and outruns the cops, even the ones who are off duty. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'd love to see today's McDonald's employees wear that. Would you like my McMuffins, hotcakes, or Big Macs? Let's play it hard. How can you not love a chase that ends with a perfect moment from a Disney sitcom laugh track? <laughs> she passes out. Yeah, get used to that. But she mentions Cornelius, who puts together who she is and tries to prepare for when she wakes up. Dallas Pervoli doesn't wait. Written by a teenager, you say? A French teenager. He's put in his place before he's put in her place. And yeah, man, I love to see what the translation says here. He's not surprisingly kicked out when the fifth element, who we find out is named Lilu, says that the case with the stones was stolen by a businessman named Zorg, played by Gary Oldman. Never be ashamed of who you are. Mm -hmm. Warriors. Be proud. A testament to this guy's performance as he agreed to this film without reading the script because Bassan helped him finance a movie he directed. As such, he says he can't stand this flick. But you would never know that from the performance he gives. It looks like he's having a ball. All the Zorgotis but goaties. Flamethrower. My favorite. He's like Clarice Starling if her voice was slowed down by like 10% and she was a used car salesman. Handles adjustable for easy carrying. Good for riders and lefties. Quick to street interventions. Dr. Lecter, my name is Clarice Starling. Maybe you can decide for yourself whether or not I'm qualified enough to do that. One shot. Sends every following shot to the same location. I also love this gun. Shame the movie doesn't. It's only used once and even then it's pretty lame. Ooh, the setting just like all other guns in movies. When he discovers the stones aren't in the case, as revealed by this Woody Woodpecker Elmer Fudd hybrid, <laughs> he leaves them one crate of guns, but doesn't tell them about the little red button at the end of the gun. <laughs> oh, did I mention this goofy music is used a lot? <laughs> It sounds like Donald Duck music trying to block out a super uncomfortable thing from a past cartoon. Jesus! Bring me the priest. Zorg sends for Cornelius, thinking he has information about the stones, which leads to, in my opinion, a fun little war of mindsets. Life, which you so nobly serve, comes from destruction, disorder, and chaos. Destroyed. Zorg says life comes out of destruction and chaos, so he's necessary. But as he discovers, one little flaw, like choking on a cherry, can destroy anyone no matter how protected. Also, I love the simple honesty of this line. You're a monster, Zorg. I know. Someone else saw the remake of Scarlet Letter? While eating Chinese, Corbin loses his job and on top of that gets a call from his mom. Corbin, sweetheart, you got broken fingers, you can't- Slappy squirrel. And it's gonna sound weird, but this is my favorite scene in the movie. That shot just so feels like a real world to me. 
The design of that boat, which you could argue is the first food truck, food boat, whatever, so feels like something that would exist in this future. And this guy feels like someone that would exist in this future. Everything about this moment just feels like a window into another world that exists. He even says a line I quote all the time when he bets him lunch that he'll get good news, but finds out he's been fired. At least I want lunch. Good philosophy. I love saying that whenever someone looks on the bright side of something. And I know that's odd, but it's moments like these that make me love the movies because the fantastical feels so real. Oh, I'll call you back. The usual action slash comic farce does happen with Corbin's old general recruiting him for a mission against the evil eight ball, rigging a contest so that he meets with a singer who has the stones. Major Iceberg will accompany you as your wife. And yes, she is made entirely out of sound effects. Lilu and Cornelius arrive too, so he hides the general, only to find he has to hide them too because Zorg's men are looking for him as well. Here's another line I shouldn't like as much as I do. Sir, are you classified as human? Uh, negative. I am a meat popsicle. Because there's a stick up my ass? This line makes no sense. Why do I love it? They take someone else thinking it's Dallas, and Lilu accidentally gets stuck in the auto wash. Many twice today. Both times. Ended up in my arms. Romantic, I guess? I don't know, he seems even more like a creeper now. Okay, in all fairness, Willis does do a very good job in this. Yes, it's very much the typical Bruce Willis performance, but it's needed for a film like this. It's like Alice in Alice in Wonderland. He needs to be the every person to react to all this weird ass shit happening around him. It works, and he does bring a lot of charm to it. <laughs> Cornelius knocks him out though, and takes his winning ticket. I'll take the mission. Kindly bury yourselves. Look at those stars. All those constellations. The Big Dipper, the Little Dipper, Medium Sized Dipper, the Middle Child Nobody Talks About, and of course, Stamps.com. Do you not see Stamps.com up there? I see it everywhere. Because when you're running a small business, every second counts. You can't afford to waste a single moment. So why are you still taking time out of your day to go to the post office when you could be using Stamps.com instead? The sparkling stamps. I can't believe you don't see it up there. Stamps.com makes mailing and shipping quick, easy, and cost-effective. Stamps.com saves you time, money, and stress. For more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. There's a shooting Stamps.com. No, you're crazy. Stamps.com gives you access to all the post office and UPS shipping services you need right now from your computer. And get discounts you can't find anywhere else, like up to 30% off USPS rates and 86% off UPS. Twinkle, twinkle, little streamline your shipping process with Stamps.com's easy-to-use software. All you need is your regular computer and printer. No special supplies or equipment. You're up and running in minutes printing official U.S. postage for any letter, any package, anywhere you want to send. Plus, Stamps.com seamlessly works with Shopify, Amazon, Etsy, eBay, and more. Where are you going? I'm talking about Stamps.com. Okay, I'll talk about it myself. So whether you're in office sending invoices, an Etsy shop sending your products, or a warehouse shipping out orders, Stamps.com is your mailing and shipping solution. Stop wasting time whoever I'm talking to and start saving money when you use Stamps.com to mail and ship. Sign up at Stamps.com slash Nostalgia for a special offer that includes a four-week free trial, plus free postage, and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com slash Nostalgia. Hey, you know what that one looks like? Representation of my sadness because I feel so alone right now? ExpressVPN. Ever heard of data brokers? They're the middlemen collecting and selling all those digital footprints you leave online. And they're in the sky, I guess. I tied that one back pretty well. Anyway, they can stitch together detailed profiles which include your browsing history, online searches, and location data. Look, there's the constellation, didn't you say data earlier? They then sell your profile off to a company who delivers you a targeted ad. No biggie, right? Well, the stars don't lie. You might be surprised to learn that these same data brokers are also selling your information to the Department of Homeland Security and the IRS. I, for one, don't want the tax man showing up to my door because of some search I did on my phone, person who's not there. So to mask my digital footprints, I protect myself with ExpressVPN. One of the easiest ways for brokers to aggregate data and tie it back to you is through your device's unique IP address, which also reveals information about your location. When you're connected to ExpressVPN, your IP address is hidden. That makes it much more difficult for data brokers to identify who you are. I wonder where my friend wandered off to? He was the best bear I know. ExpressVPN also encrypts 100% of your network traffic to keep your data safe from hackers on public Wi-Fi. 
That's why I have the ExpressVPN app download on all my devices, phone, computer, and even my home Wi-Fi router. All I do is tap one button to turn it on, and I'm protected. It's that easy. Hey, there's my friend. <laughs> Hungry, are ya? Well, let me finish up about ExpressVPN. Make sure your online activity and data is protected with the best VPN money can buy. Visit expressvpn.com slash nostalgiacritic right now and get three extra months free with my special link. That's expressvpn.com slash nostalgiacritic. Go to expressvpn.com slash nostalgiacritic to learn more. Okay, buddy, I'll feed ya. I think I got some rice cakes around here. That was my foot. See Doug play Guardians of the Galaxy Fridays at 6 p.m. Central Time on Twitch. We also got a new schedule and material six days a week. Hope to see you there. At the airport, Lee Lu is told to travel with Cornelius' assistant pretending to be Dallas. But Dallas shows up just as she's handing over her multipass. And yes, she repeatedly lets you know that's what she's doing. Multipass. 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 Lila and multipass. Sparks multi happen. Yeah, she knows it's a multipass. I won't point out all the memes that have been made from this, but I will point out the one that hasn't. This one. Shame on you, internet. Oh, Mr. Dallas, we really need you right now. He's introduced to the DJ the contest was based around Ruby Rod. Like, I even need to tell you who this was played by. This boy is fueled like fire. So start melting, ladies, because the boy is hotter than hot. He's hot, hot, hot. I always assumed this was a hybrid of Prince and Michael Jackson, and apparently they wanted Prince to play the role. I have no idea what about his personality would make them think he would say yes to this. But honestly, I don't know if that would work, because I don't know if he'd be in on the joke. Now, Dave Chappelle playing Prince in this role, that I could see working. Freeze those knees, my knees, because Herb's in the place and he's on the cake. A frost on paradise! <laughs> Reminds me of J.K. Simmons in Spider-Man, as a character in this over-the-top, odd world giving an even more over-the-top, odder performance. Or like Steve Buscemi in Con Air. Just when you think all the weirdness has been introduced, they up the ante halfway through. He also contrasts great with Willis's still and quiet reactions. It was bad! It, it had nothing! No fire, no energy, no nothing! I just love his look like, did your Cheeto penis hair make contact with me? After they get rid of the Dr. Mario viruses on the ship, they take off with Lilo learning English in seconds from the computer. Hi. Oh, you speak English now? Yes, I learned. Can't figure that'd be the first thing she learned, but again, it gave us multipass. So I can't complain. Zork's office. Zork gets a call from the ball, who I guess also goes by Mr. Shadow on the line. What's his other alias, Mr. <laughs> and he says he's growing impatient. I want. Please don't turn me into a sundae, I'm too delicious. They never do explain what this black gunk on people's heads are when they talk to this thing. And yeah, I guess the mystery is kind of fun. As long as this dance never happens, I'll be fine. Speaking of music, the opera singer who has the stones performs in front of an audience, and as I think many pointed out, the notes she sings are edited together because no human can go so low to so high so fast. <laughs> Some singers gave it a shot. Yeah, I definitely went down the rabbit hole with this one. <laughs> and found Jane Zhang is probably the closest. <laughs> but even her phenomenal talent can't quite do it like the original. Pretty goddamn amazing. <laughs> Lilu fights off the Mangalores trying to take the case with the stones, but Zora comes in with his kick ass gun on its most boring setting. He shoots her all up as the Mangalores do the same to the diva. Zora leaves with the case, leading to hands down the funniest scene in the movie to me. <laughs> How could anyone who made that so funny not love the movie they're in? The diva tells Dallas, though, that the stones are in her. In me. Whoa, whoa, I'm in my hat, you psycho! What are you doing?! Dallas gets caught but teams up with Ruby because, eh, things weren't silly enough. Who does his best impression of Danny Glover and or Shia LaBeouf on Fast Forward. What do you want me to do? 
What's he doing? <laughs> Fun fact, this is the largest indoor explosion ever filmed. I just wish it was shot so that it, you know, looked like the largest indoor explosion ever filmed. Surprisingly, it looks underwhelming. One more shot, we start killing hostages. He next has to save Cornelius as he remembers the Mangalores won't fight without their leader. So he sent in to negotiate. We're sending somebody in to negotiate! Anybody else want to negotiate? He was in Mouse Hunt. I don't know, what do you want me to say after that? It's a perfect line! The ship is evacuated because there's a bomb on board resulting in Dallas and Zork having their final... Walk past each other. Yeah, this is one of those rare action films where the villain and hero never meet. You know what? Their interactions with everyone else is so good. While it'd be cool to see him interact, it's surprisingly not needed. Are the honor. Oh no. Zorg accidentally goes down with the ship, but the bowling ball of doom starts rushing towards Earth. There's a ball of fire heading straight for Earth. We have no idea how to stop it. This is where the movie starts to get a little boring. They out of nowhere decide, eh, maybe we should throw in some commentary on humanity sucking and throw in Lilu looking up Earth's violent history, wondering if it's worth saving. Okay, this is something you introduce halfway at the latest, not the last 15 minutes. On top of that, isn't it a little weird making a big stink about how war and violence is bad after we saw Bruce Willis blowing aliens up and shouting one-liners? Did an adult write this or not? Oh, yeah. It does give us one cool scene, though, where they had to figure out how to open the stones back in Egypt. Corbin, it moved! Devo Boy is finally useful and figures out the stones have to be open with whatever element they represent. And you know a scene is working when the character says, hold your breath, and I legit hold my breath every time. But, like I mentioned, Lilu has to be convinced the world isn't all filled with hate. Yeah, good in humanity, blah blah blah. It's the use of saving life when you see what you do with it. Dallas assures her, though, that there are some things that are worth saving. Like love. Well, like love. Love is worth saving. I don't know love. Well, okay, I've never been to Monaco, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna let it blow up. Also, funny how we go from Dallas moving way too fast on Lilu to suddenly he's not moving fast enough. I need you. Why? Tell her, uh, Colin. Please. Because I love you. Written by a teenager. Even these cartoon characters would say this is going too fast. It of course works, and she uses her fifth element -y powers to stop the ball of evil. Trapped. I've been foiled by the power of love. The planet seems to have stopped at 62 miles from impact. <laughs> Until the next concentrated ball of evil, I guess. The president and his team laugh, unaware they now have another moon that's gonna destroy their tides, but he wants to congratulate our heroes who pick a really weird time and place to bang. They need five more minutes. Okay, one more minute. And that was the fifth element. I'll admit it's not hard to see why somebody wouldn't like this movie, even some of the people in it, but it grows on me the more time passes. The problems with it are very obvious with its simple writing and cartoony characters, but I don't think it really tries to be anything too deep. Honestly, the weaker moments are when it does try to be about something, and even then, they're pretty short and saved until the end. I know a lot of celebrities use the term popcorn movie when they want to defend a film they're in that they know is bad, but this really is a perfect example of that. It's a fun and silly action flick that uses unique and creative ways to be a fun and silly action flick. What it lacks in intelligence, it makes up for in passion. What it loses in subtlety, it finds in optimism. And what it misses with ideas, it hits with world building. It's not that no thought was put into it, it's just put in places most filmmakers consider secondary. Like the environments, costumes, and side characters. I guess it doesn't make it a great film, but still one to admire and enjoy. I know it's not everyone's flick, but if you're in the mood to be creatively stupid and stupidly creative, this is the sci-fi flick to check out. So how's your little vacation and how you liking your clothes? You know, I'm not gonna lie, I'm digging these clothes a lot more than I thought. Are you sure this is right? It looks right, Malcolm. But it doesn't feel right. Welcome to being a woman. That's right, enjoy your time and just ignore that plan of evil racing towards you. Wait, what? Oh, you can figure out the value of human life in two minutes. I don't think we can do that. <laughs> Last no you there. I hate being in these! I know.
What's up everybody? Our cameos for charity are still doing great and so we're gonna switch it up this month. All through June we're donating our cameo money to Friends of Firefighters. Friends of Firefighters is a not-for-profit organization that provides independent, confidential, and free mental health counseling and wellness services to active and retired New York firefighters as well as their family members. So if you want a cameo from me as the nostalgia critic saying happy birthday or congrats or whatever you can think of, click the link below and be supporting a wonderful charity. And even if you're like, screw you, I don't want a cameo from you, well, spread the word about this charity anyway. Check out the site, donate, or share it on social media. Thanks so much again and take care.